Hey everyone, in this video I wanted to explore the relationship between Logic Apps and Power Automate. I've done a number of videos recently on Logic Apps and the questions arise, well, what's the difference between those Logic Apps and Power Automate? As always, this is useful, a like and subscribe is appreciated. So let's start off thinking about Logic Apps. And I have done a number of videos about these already. So I can think about Logic Apps are available from within an Azure subscription. So it's one of the PaaS services. So it's a platform as a service. I'm not worried about hosting some virtual machine or patching some operating system. I focus on my application. I focus on the logic and the service takes care of the hosting and the execution of it. It's thought of as a serverless offering. And what I mean by that is you're not really thinking about units of virtual machines underneath. There's a consumption based model where I just pay for the work it does for the types of connectors it interacts with. Now there is also a standard plan where I can have some dedicated infrastructure if I want to maybe have more control over that pricing, but it is a serverless offering. I think about it's being triggered by some event. That could be something that's written to a queue, it could be a certain scheduled time, it could be some manual interaction, I'm triggering via an API, but say it's going to trigger it and then it's going to perform a set of actions. And that's really the key part around this. When we talk about connectors, there are ways that Logic Apps really wrap some very friendly ways to interact with other APIs out there. And it also has some built-in native capabilities as well. Now, when I talk about it is consumption-based, that means that when I'm paying for it, my dollars is really based on the consumption the work it does. And as I mentioned, it runs within an Azure subscription. So I have to have an Azure subscription. I go and create my new Logic App, and then I, I create my code. That means there's a certain amount of governance associated with that Azure subscription that I am going to manage. If we actually stepped over for a second and looked at the pricing of Logic Apps, we can see that consumption-based nature. I can see, hey, with the consumption plan, I'm basically paying for the number of actions. I do get 4,000 actions free. And then you pay for calls to the different types of connector, both standard connector and enterprise connector. Or I can have a standard plan where I have that dedicated set of infrastructure on which my Logic Apps run, this makes the billing a little bit more predictable. So we have those choices. And again, I've done a stack of videos around Logic Apps already, so I'm not gonna go into the details of that. I wanna focus more about what is that relationship. So if that's Logic Apps, this PaaS solution, this serverless solution, what is Power Automate? Formerly known as Microsoft Flow. So I can think here of Power Automate. And as I'm drawing it, it's actually very real as to how it works because Power Automate itself sits on top of Logic Apps. It abstracts it away so I'm not worried about, hey, the Logic App or an Azure subscription or those governance things. Power Automate is more of a SaaS solution. It's a SaaS that is built on Logic Apps. So when I think about that, it's important to understand that if I can do something in Logic Apps, well, I'm gonna be able to do that on Power Automate as well. But I don't have to set up subscriptions. I don't have to set up an application. I don't have to manage connections. I don't worry about billing based on consumption. It's all managed for me, hence why it's really talked about more of a SaaS type solution, although obviously I still have to create my business logic. So all of that Azure resource management, that is taken away. Users don't need an Azure subscription at all. 
when I think about the interaction, or how do I actually create these things, there are some that are specific to them, but one of the main ways is there is the designer. So we have a designer, and that is common. Now there might be a little bit of um, extra decorative things around them. Power Apps has some nice templates that I can fire off from within the application. So I'm in an Office app, for example. I don't ever really see a designer. It will just go and create via the Power Automate the Logic App that does the work I want to do. It is handling all of the connection management for me. So when I think about the Power Automate side and some of the big benefits here, well, I'm not thinking about resource management. So here there is no resource management. I'm not worrying about Azure subscriptions, I'm not worrying about governance. There's no connection management. So with Logic Apps, I set up connections, I manage those. That is all provided as a service layer. So there is no connection management that I have to take care of for that. It's just all handled for me. I can go and connect to SharePoint, for example. It's all just handled. But Power Automate is giving me all of the same connectors of Logic Apps because it's, again, it's built on top of it. So I have all of the same connectors available in Logic Apps, plus it actually has some of its own. So it has some first party connectors. So using the Dataverse, it adds things like approvals. So it has a native approval capability. So if we jump over for a second and just look at this. So here, this is a Logic App. So if I look at a Logic App, I have the designer, I can see the various actions. There are ones that are built in. There are ones where I can call REST APIs. There are ones where I'm calling some standard connector. But we have this sort of graphical designer. If I go to make.powerautomate.com, which is the new URL, it's exactly the same. I can start off with templates. I hate saying about an email, files and documents, notifications and reminders. Or I can just say, hey, I want to create. And I could create from blank. Or we have all of these templates that I can leverage. Hey, I can start from a certain connector that I want to use. If I want to start from blank, well, what's going to trigger this? Okay, maybe it's a, a schedule. I can put in the schedule. I'm just going to do skip for now. And then I'm faced with the designer. So the first thing I want to do is, well, what is kind of that trigger? So I can look at, well, there were standard connectors. There were the built-in. And these all align with what we have in Logic Apps as well. So it's a very, very familiar experience with how I would go and create these. Now, there are different connectors. If we look for a second at the license entitlements, for example, this I'm, I'm focusing on things around like Microsoft 365. If we look at the standard connectors, well, this is just a list of connectors. And we'll notice there are icons that show, well, does it work in Logic Apps? Is it available in Power Automate? And as we look down these, all of these connectors, you'll see pretty much all of them are, well, yeah, hey, it's, it's Logic Apps and it's Power Automate. So you have these very common set across these because Power Automate is built on top of Logic Apps. So it really makes sense that, hey, we have the same capabilities. Now, licensing may impact exactly what you can use, and we'll talk more about that in a second. So if we jump back, so we say, okay, great. So Power Automate abstracts a lot of the resource management away, the connection management away, it adds some first party connectors like approvals to make that really, really simple to do. From a licensing perspective, it's not based on this consumption anymore. So the way this is gonna work, now I'm gonna say per user. There are other license options. For example, there's, there's like a per app, per flow, there are, there are different things I can do. 
And if we actually look at those really, really quickly, so these are the types of Power Automate plans available. And if you actually go and look, you can see all of the different types of, hey, Power Automate per user plan, per user with RPA, the robotic process automation, per flow plans. And then you have these seeded plans. So many of the ways people are gonna get Power Automate is they own another license. Hey, I own Microsoft 365. So I get this, hey, I own Dynamics 365, or maybe I do get a Power App specific license. And it has a nice chart here that basically explains, well, depending on which license you have, that will say what you have access to. And there are limits. So we can see here there are limits around what I can actually do in terms of the amount of work it's performing. How many actions a day can I do, for example? So if I was to jump over to this other document, this goes into detail. Hey, I own Office 365. Well, what can I do? Well, here you can see, we're currently going through a transition period, but normally it would be 2,000 Power Platform requests a day, but it's 10,000 during this transition period, and I get access to all the standard connectors. I can create and execute automated scheduled button flows and things like that as well. So we have those various capabilities available to us. But for most of us, we're gonna get access to Power Automate because, hey, I have a Microsoft 365 license or I have a Dynamics license, I'm gonna have one of those. So then the question becomes, okay, why are there two solutions and which one should I be using? It's actually fairly simple to think about. Power Automate is really targeted at makers. I'm trying to create some automation, maybe from within an office app or Dynamics or something else that's for me, or it's for my team. Whereas Logic Apps is really focused at a developer. I'm trying to create something maybe for my organizational level automation, or it could be something that is just very high scale. So it doesn't fit within those per user, per flow licenses that I have with Power Automate. And that's really the way to think about it. I wouldn't think of a, a versus. It's what is the persona that's leveraging and what is the target? hey, I want to create something for me or, or my team, some nice automation, maybe triggering it from Teams or um, SharePoint or something like that. Hey, Power Automate is a fantastic solution. I don't have to worry about subscriptions or resource management or connection management or any of those things. Very easy to get up and running. I'm trying to create something for my organization. It's some very high scale job. Then Logic Apps is the right solution. And that's the relationship between them. The question come up, so I just wanted to address it. Power Automate sits on top of Logic Apps but abstracts away all of that resource management. And instead of it being this consumption-based model where I pay for the work it's doing or worry about some set of resources, hey, it's just this very simple SaaS solution. Most things are abstracted away. If I go and create these flows from within a, an app, I may not even see the fact that there is a flow being used at all. It asks me a few things, I put it in, it creates the Power Automate flow, the logic app behind the scenes. I don't even see the designer. It's just abstracted away. I can go and look if I want to, but by default, I just won't even see it. So that's the idea. Hey, if I can do it in logic apps, I, I can do it in Power Automate, and it adds some additional things like approvals, just as a, a feature that's unique to that. So I hope that helped. I hope that uh, clarified that a bit. Until the next video, take care.